This is how to edit videos on iPhone like a pro. In this video, I'm gonna share my number one pick for the best free video editing app on iPhone. Then I'm gonna take you through step-by-step -step how to make videos quickly and easily using your iPhone or an iPad. So my number one pick right now for the best all-rounder video editing app on iPhone and iPad is CapCut. It's amazing and it's gonna be great whether you're an absolute beginner or you are someone more advanced. And that's the app that I'm gonna be taking you through in this step-by-step -step editing tutorial. Now, even if you're not gonna be using CapCut, you can still follow along and follow the same process that I'm running through with whichever app you're using. And you can actually download a copy of our free PDF editing guide, taking you through this exact process that I'm gonna take you through in this video, which is linked down in the description box below. Now I'm showing you this on an iPad just because it's got a bigger screen, but everything is going to be exactly the same if you're on an iPhone as well. So on this screen here, you can see all of your recent editing projects. They'll appear down the bottom here. But to create a new project, which is what we're gonna do now, you wanna select this button. Now from here, we wanna then go and pick our primary camera footage. We'll then bring in the rest of our footage and graphics and overlays and stuff later, but we wanna select our primary camera footage here first. And to do that, you want to select that little checkbox or little circle in the corner here so that that clip is selected. Now you can select multiple clips here. And it numbers them one, two, three. So you'll want to pick them in order if you can do that at this point. If not, you can move them around a little later on. Now, if you want to play the clips to preview them, then instead of selecting the little circle in the corner, you can just tap on the clip itself. That'll go ahead and open it up here and you can play it. You can jump around in the video to make sure that that is actually the clip that you want to use. And you can also perform some really basic edits here as well. So we can hit trim and we could actually trim off a section grabbing these yellow handles. So we want it to start about here and we wanted it to finish a little bit earlier as well. Or we only wanted a small chunk of that clip. Then we can actually trim down our clip here by hitting the tick here in the corner and we can just import that small section. Now I'm going to cancel out of this now because I'd much rather just bring in the entire clip and use CapCut's full editing features to cut down our video from there. So we're gonna go back here. We've got our primary clip selected. Then we wanna come down the bottom here to add. So this is our main editing interface. This is our playback monitor or our preview monitor here. This is where we can see what it is we're editing. We've got our editing timeline down the bottom here, which we can tap and slide to scrub across our footage. We can zoom in and out on it by pinching to zoom. And we've got all of our main editing tools down the bottom here. And if you're not seeing them all, you can tap and swipe across this bottom bar here so that you can see everything. Now, if at any time you want to play back your clip, you can hit the little play button here and that will start playing. You can also preview a full screen version by hitting this little button here. That'll maximize that up and we can shrink it back down using this one. Now, really quickly, before we start editing our project down, it's a good idea to come up to this area here where it says 1080p and select on this little drop down arrow here. And this will let us actually choose our video resolution and our frame rate. Now, by default, this should actually match the primary footage that you've already selected here. But if you do need something specific or you need to change something up, then you can do that here too. So you can see we're currently set at 1080p. We could actually bump this up to two or 4K and we could adjust the frame rate here as well if we needed to. I'm gonna leave it as is for this project. And the other thing that we can do is down the bottom here, we can also adjust our aspect ratio or the format of the video that we're creating. Now this is something that you can change at any time, but you can see right now we've defaulted to a regular widescreen video here. That's because this main clip that we imported was a widescreen clip. But if we do wanna change it here to say a portrait or a square video, we can tap on this ratio button here and we can actually choose nine by 16, one by one, or some of these other ratios here as well. And let's just say that we did pick nine by 16 if we we're gonna create a TikTok or an Instagram reel, we can easily resize this so that it fits just by pinching to zoom on this area here, which it says use both fingers to resize your video. So if I pinch on this now, we can scale that up so that it fits. And then I can use a single finger to drag across and reposition this so that I'm now centered on that screen for this portrait version of this video. Now I'm just gonna undo this now because we're gonna edit a regular widescreen video. But you can see how powerful this is and how easy it is to be able to switch between these different formats really, really quickly. So now that we have our primary footage here in our timeline, the first thing we wanna do is start to edit this down. Let's remove all the bad takes, all the mistakes, anything that you actually don't wanna have in your finished video. So you can see at the start of this, as I scrub across here, I'm tapping on my microphone to make sure it's working. 
So we wanna find the piece where I actually start talking, which is about here. So we wanna start our video at this point. Now, so we're gonna tap on our clip here, just so it's selected. You can see we get a bunch more settings down the bottom here. Now we can come across to split, and that has split our clip here into two. So you can see we've got two clips in our timeline now. We can select this first one, this one on the left, and we can press the little trash can, little delete button down the bottom here. And that has removed that clip and our video will now start from that point. Now, if you decide you actually don't want to do that or you will make a mistake, you've got your undo and redo buttons over here as well. So we'll just undo that now because I'll show you another way that you can do this because sometimes it will make sense to do things one way over the other. So again, we wanna make sure our clip is selected here, but this time we're gonna instead grab this white handle here on the left. We're going to tap and drag or click and drag and swipe across to where we want our video to start. So right around here. Now when we let go, then that is now the start point of our video. So we've trimmed off the start. Let's come across to the very end of our video here. Now, one really important thing to be aware of at this point is that CapCut by default, it actually creates this extra little clip here on the end. So we can just tap on that. We can press delete and that is gone. But you wanna make sure that you are removing that clip. Otherwise it will be in your finished video. So from here, we can find the piece where we want our video to end. We can select the clip again. We can grab that end point and swipe backwards until we find the point where we want our video to finish. So for the sake of this video, let's go about here, just as I look down. Now, obviously you can be playing through your clip here and working out exactly where it is that you want to make these cuts or adjustments. So now we've trimmed off the start, we've trimmed off the end. Now we wanna go through and remove any bad takes or any mistakes as we go through. So we can either do this from start to finish, or we can work our way backwards through the edit here as well. And sometimes, depending on how you've actually recorded your video, it might make sense to edit backwards and it can be much, much faster. So we can see here, just before I start talking again, we can add a split here. So all of this here is good. And we've got a piece here that we'll wanna remove. We can scrub back through here again until we find the piece where I start talking here. We can select the clip and we can add a split here at this point. And you can now see we've got three clips here. We wanna remove this middle one, select it, press the delete button, and that has been removed. So the idea here is you wanna go through, remove any of those bad takes using the methods that I've just shown you. So you're just left with all the good stuff or your core story. Next step is to bring in any graphics, any overlay, any B-roll footage that you wanna add into your video. So for that, we wanna come down to the bottom here where it says overlay. We wanna hit that one, then add overlay. We wanna then go find the clips that we want to add in. So I'm gonna pick this one here and this one, and I'm going to choose add. So if I pinch to zoom out a little bit now, we can see down the bottom here, we now have this new overlay clip here, and it's actually overlaid on top of our video. We can still see our video underneath it here. And just like our other clips here, we can select it, we can adjust the start and end time on this clip. So if there's only a small section of it we actually want to use, then we can select that here. So let's say we want the clip to start about here and finish about here. We can select it here and choose split. And we've now got a separate little clip that we can pick up by long press and holding on it. We can drag it to where we want that clip to appear. And this we scrub through this section here. Now we can see that I'm still talking there in the background, so the audio and everything will be there, but we're now seeing this overlay footage here on top of that section. Now we can see that it doesn't quite fit the frame here, so we can easily just select that clip. And up the top here, we can pinch to zoom to scale that up. So if I use two fingers now, I can actually make that full screen at that point too. Then we can come across and grab the rest of our B-roll. So if there's any other clips from this longer clip that we wanna use, maybe a little piece here from the end where I'm adjusting my screen, we could just select that piece. We could split the clip, delete the first piece here because we don't need any of that. We're now left with this short clip here, which we can pick up by long pressing on it, drag it back to where we want it here in our timeline. And that clip there will now play at that point. Again, we wanna max maximize this so we want to select it we want to pinch to zoom on it up the top here so that it's scaled to fit our video so you want to go ahead now import all of your b-roll or overlay clips that you want to use here in your timeline so you can see with the next clip that i've bought in here it's actually added a third layer here so we can actually really stack these clips up if we'd like but it's also a good idea first off when they come in like this to select them and scale them up at this point so that then all your remaining clips and edits here, that all of those are going to be the correct size so you don't have to do them individually. 
So we'll select the piece of this clip here that we want, delete this one here. Let's add another split and remove this end. And we now have another clip that we can use in our edit here. Now, the other thing worth noting before we move on is that we are still currently here in overlay mode. So if we hit this little back button here to get out of overlay mode, you can see that those clips, they've actually changed the view on them just to take up less screen real estate. So we've still got those additional clips at that point. And you can see where they start. You can see this red line here as for how long they actually go for before it comes back to our primary footage, but it's just a compressed view of them. So at any time, if you want to go back and make adjustments to these clips, you can just tap on them and then you're back in that overlay mode. Next up from there, you want to add in any text or titles to your video. So you want to come down the bottom here to text. And then we've got the option here of adding in basic text titles with this one, or we can use some of their text templates here, which are pretty cool. So I'm going to start off first with just basic text. So we select on that and we get to enter our text here. So we could go Justin Brown. So if this was a name card. We can then select our fonts down the bottom here. And there's lots in here to choose from. We can also adjust the style. So we could manually pick different colors and things here. Also different borders on the text and shadows and things, all of that is in here. But there's also some presets here under effects where we can just select these as maybe even a good starting point if there's something in here that you like the look of that you could then customize up by going back then to the styles area and adjusting the colors and things. There's also some simple animations here too in this section where we can tap on one of these and it's going to animate our text in. So the text at the top here, it's all adjustable as well. So we can tap on it, we can pick it up, we can move it around, we can pinch to zoom to scale it bigger or smaller, or we can actually hit this little resize button here to stretch it up to again, get it looking how we'd like. Once you're happy with that, we hit the little tick down the bottom corner and that is applied to our our timeline. And just like all of our other clips, we get a separate one down the bottom here for this text too. So we can pick it up, we can move it around to where we want it to start. We can adjust how long it's going to be on screen for as well. So that was the basic text. Now, if we come back down here instead to the text templates, then in here, there's some really cool presets and things that you can use and again, customize up for your videos as well. So we're currently just here on the trending tab. So there's a lot of random ones in here. But you can easily navigate through a lot of these other categories and things here as well, like even just titles. We've got some pretty cool looking animated titles, again, that we can just drag and drop and customize up here. There's even things in here under social media. You've got things like your subscribe buttons. We can come over here to messages and you can really build out a full little chat where it looks like it's messages or alerts or things from your phone. So we can just select this here and again, all of this is customizable. We can edit that text. So I'm gonna remove this one. Let's come back here though, and let's add in one of those YouTube subscribe buttons. So we'll go to text templates, we'll go to social media. Let's grab this subscribe button. We just tap on it, it's added to our video here. We can hit the little tick then to come back to our main editing mode. And again, we've got our subscribe button here in the timeline. Now, if we wanna edit that text, we can just double tap on it up here or down here. And you can see we've got the text here. I mean, we could say something like subscribe now if we wanted to. I'm also just showing you that it's customizable here at this point. And again, we can pick it up, we can move it around, we can resize it. Maybe we'll put it on a little bit of an angle and let's put it down the bottom corner here. So at that point in our video, if we're playing it through, then it's going to appear there. So you wanna go through now, add in any text or titles or graphics into your video. Next up, we're gonna add in any effects or transitions into our edit. And there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. If you wanna add a transition onto your clips in your primary timeline, you can see all of our separate clips down the bottom here, separated out. This little white marker here between each of the clips, this is your transition marker. So if we press on this, then there's again a bunch of transitions that we can use to add between these two clips. So these again, some of the trending ones, a simple black fade, pull in, now this is definitely one of those areas where you can overdo it and uh, create a really average looking video if you're just dropping in a bunch of these things. It can make them feel very cheap because a lot of them are overused. So I'd say use these sparingly. And this is where I'd use simple things like a black fade or a cross fade. But in say this video here, for example, I actually wouldn't use a transition where the two 
clips here are essentially the same. It's just removing a bad take or a mistake. So I'm gonna select on that transition there. We're gonna go back over here to none to remove that. But instead what I would do in this case is I would actually zoom in on one of these shots just to make it look a little bit different. So I would select this clip here, come up to the top here and pinch to zoom in a little bit on this shot. Now, depending on how you've shot this, we really don't wanna zoom in too much because we could be losing quality. But the idea here is that we've zoomed in on one of these shots and the next one will be back to the original, so zoomed out, that this is the effect that you'll get. So if we scrub through this now, we've now got our zoomed in shot here and then it comes back out to our main shot. So it just breaks it up a little bit for the viewer. Now to really sell this effect, you wanna try and make sure that if in the case of this shot here, that the eyes are in a very similar position. It's gonna make it less jarring for your viewers. So might try and adjust that a little bit closer, something like that. Let's see how this looks now. Okay, so it's a bit more subtle, it's less jarring. So that's what we would do in the case of our YouTube videos here. Just zoom in or punch in to break up the shot. But you can also add transitions and effects to your overlay footage here too. So we select one of our overlay clips, come down the bottom here to animation. Then in here there's a bunch of transitions that we can use when that clip starts playing. Again, something I'd suggest that you use sparingly, but some of these could look pretty cool. We just then hit the tick on that one. Now when this video plays through, then we can see that it's gonna have that effect added to it. So you wanna go through now and add in any of those transitions or effects onto your clips. But some other cool stuff that you can do in here, let's say we wanted to speed up one of these clips, we can select it down the bottom here, you have speed. So we can either use basic speed control where we're just increasing the speed here by sliding this slider up, or we can decrease the speed by taking this backwards. Or if we come over here to curve, this is a personal favorite of mine, there are some preset speed adjustments here too. Or you can come over here to custom and you can actually control the speed this way. So this is your speed here at 100% or normal speed. And we can say here towards the start, let's boost this up a little bit. So we'll start off at normal speed, we'll speed up, and then maybe we'll want to slow back down here. So we can then slow the speed down for the rest of our clip. So it's now sped up at the start and then slows down towards the end here. So all of these we can pick up and we can move around to create what we're after. So that's the speed control, but there's other really cool things in here as well, like cutout. So if we click on this one here now and go background removal, it's going to try and remove me out from the background of this clip. Now, I wouldn't normally use it on this clip here, but let's just see what it looks like. Okay, so let's play through this now. So we now have me on screen with that background removed. And this could be something where we pick this up and move it off to the side here, if this is the effect that we are looking for. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that now. Let's bring back the background, there we go. But pretty amazing, again, in a free app. Now there's so many other effects and things in here, we're definitely not gonna run through them all. But if you come down here to effects, just to give you a quick little teaser, if we go to video effects, and in here there's a bunch of different effects, like you could add a blur, there's some camera shake or camera movement ones in here, some of them more subtle than others. We come over here to glitch, there's some different glitch effects. And let's say that we wanted to use this effect here and we just hit the tick here, then we actually now get this effect that is added to our timeline. And we can again pick it up, move it around, choose where we want this effect. So if we only want this glitch effect on screen for this little piece here, then we can adjust that to just where we want it. Next up, we wanna add in any music and sound effects into our videos. We can hit the little button down here, add audio, or down the bottom here, you've got audio here. So if we press on this, we can then record a voiceover. We can add in any effects or any music here too, which is sounds. So if we press on sounds, there is a bunch of music that is included with CapCut, but I would strongly recommend if you are not creating TikTok videos, then don't use their music because you'll likely get a copyright strike from using it. CapCut is made by the same company, ByteDance, which also make TikTok. So a lot of the music is fine to use on TikTok, but you could end up with copyright claims and issues and things if you use them elsewhere. So I strongly recommend that you're grabbing your own music if you're not uploading to TikTok. Now, if you wanna use music that is on your device, you can come across to the little folder here, your sounds, come across to from device, and you might find that they show up in this point here. If they're not, and you do have music on your device, then you'll need to jump across to the Files app, find the music track that you wanna use, and just hit Share, and then go across and share it to CapCut. And it says here, import audio to CapCut. We can then close out of this screen here, and our audio is added here directly to our timeline. 
So I'm gonna pick it up, let's move it across to the start of our video. Let's go across to the end. We do wanna shorten this off. You can see it runs past the ending of our video here. So we wanna drag this back so that it lines up when our video finishes. And that audio track is now added to our video. Now, just like our regular clip, we could add splits in this. We could remove sections. We could duplicate the clip to have multiple music tracks in here. You can see with this music track selected, we can add in audio fades as well. So we could fade the start in, we could fade out at the end. If we hit the tick now, you can see now there is a slight line there showing that we do have an audio fade applied. And likewise, there is one at the end. So now that you've got your audio file in there, you might find that you're going back and you're tweaking and adjusting some of your cuts here to match the beat if you need to, just to make the video flow more seamlessly. And then when that's done, then we're going to adjust our audio levels. Now what I suggest you do here is you work on your audio from your primary video first, your spoken piece, your narration, your voiceover first, to get that to the correct level and then adjust your music and sound effects and things afterwards. So we're gonna come down here to this music track and just for now, we're gonna grab the volume level here and we're gonna turn it right down. So that it's currently muted. And then we're gonna select our first clip here in the timeline, we're gonna come down to volume. We can lower the volume down by dragging the slider to the left. We can increase the volume by dragging the slider to the right. And we can actually do it while we're playing through the video here as well. So we can actually hear the difference. And this is where I'd strongly recommend you doing this with headphones on as well. But typically what you'll find is the cap cut actually does a really good job of setting the volume levels for you automatically. So once you've got your volume levels dialed in for the first clip here, then you can actually do a loudness adjustment for the remaining clips in here as well. So I've gone through and processed this here now just so you can see, and the remaining clips here, you can see the minor adjustments that are happening for each of these clips based on it automatically adjusting the volume levels for us. But once your volume level is set right for your primary audio there, then next we're going to do the music. So we'll come back to our main screen here. Let's select our music track here in our timeline. Let's go to volume. So again here, ideally we're playing this through when we're making these adjustments. We're grabbing this volume slider here. We've got headphones on for the best experience to really hear what this sounds like. And we just go through and we're increasing this to where we want it. So the music isn't too overpowering, so that in this case here, we can still hear what it is what I'm saying, but so that it's loud enough that the viewers can hear it without it being too loud and distracting. And depending on the music track, what we usually find for our videos is anywhere from 30 to 40, depending on the music track, is about where we'll at least have it as a starting point. Then we hit the tick and that is done. Now in here as well, when it comes to audio, if we select our primary clip here, we also do have some different voice effects in here. And we also have background noise removal as well, which both work really well. Now you also don't wanna forget here that if you do have B-roll or overlay clips here included in your timeline like we do, you wanna make sure that if those clips have audio, that they are muted or that you're adjusting the audio volume levels on each of those clips too. So let's select these. Let's go to volume and we can adjust these accordingly. So in our case here, I want these muted. So I'll just select them, lower the volume down to nothing. Next, we're going to color grade or adjust the colors in our video. So again, we start with our first clip here. We can then come down here to either filters or adjust. So if we go to filters, then you can think of these like Instagram filters that you could apply to your videos. So these could be a great starting point if you're really after a specific look and feel. So you can see just by tapping on these that we are totally changing up our videos. So if there's something here that you like the look of, again, it could be a good starting point. Point, we can then customize this up further. We can also adjust the intensity of this. So this is probably a little much, but we could actually dial this back a little bit and it's not too bad. Now, if you are gonna go the filter route here, we can actually apply this to all of our clips once we've got the first one dialed in. If we wanna make more adjustments to this, then we can come across to the adjust area and we can go through and adjust things like our brightness, contrast, saturation, exposure, to again, dial in the look that we're after. Now I'm gonna come back here to filters. I'm going to disable that filter. I'm just gonna hit the checkbox to go back out of this. Instead, I'm gonna come into adjust, which is that adjust tab here. So there's two different ways that you can get to this. And the first thing I would adjust here is the exposure. So the brightness of the shot. So we've got exposure, we can either lower the exposure or we can brighten it up. Now this one here, normally only a minor adjustment. So I'm gonna increase the brightness here just a little bit or the exposure here a little bit. From there, I jump into the color temperature. And if we slide this one way, it's gonna make our shot cooler or add more blue. The other way, 
create or make it warmer or add more yellow. And again, this is a creative thing. There really is no right or wrong here. You wanna create the look that you're after. So once I've done the exposure, I've done the temperature, I then look at the shadows, so the dark areas of the shot, and I can make those brighter or darker. And from there, I jump into the hue to make any minor color adjustments. You can see we can totally change the look of this here. So probably around here somewhere. And once we're happy with that, we can apply this to all of our video clips. And now all of our clips will have that applied. Now we can also do this on a clip by clip basis as well by selecting on a clip and going and adjusting something manually. Likewise, we can also do it on our B-roll and overlay clips here as well by selecting the clip. And then we've got access to the same options down here as well with filters and adjust. Once you're done, it's then time to export your video. So again, if you need to make adjustments to your quality and the frame rates and things, you can do all of that here first. And then when it's time to share or save out your video, you just wanna hit this export button and the export is going to start for you. Once that's done, it's a good idea to play back your video and make sure that everything is how you want it. And then you're good to release it to the world. Now that you're up to speed editing in CapCut on iOS, don't forget to grab our free copy of our PDF guide, taking you through the ultimate video editing process that's exactly what I ran you through in this video so that you can print it out and you can follow along while you're making your videos. So there's a link to that on screen down in the description as well. And I will see you in the next video.